For this web clip, we're going to look at doing ligand design using Torch and Spark in tandem, and this is really a fragment growing experiment. So this picks up from an earlier web clip, which involved aligning molecules with Torch and Forge. So in this experiment with the link above, we had a reference which was the ligand from the 1-OIT crystal structure, which is a ligand in its bioactive conformation to be used as a, as a reference. And we had a series of 10 cyclin-dependent kinase ligands that we aligned to that reference. Now what we will do is we'll use one of those smaller CDK ligands, a fragment, to design a better ligand that better matches the field point pattern exhibited by the ligand in the 1OIT structure. So this is about using Torch and Spark in tandem for iterative design. So once the molecules have been aligned to a reference, our design process begins. And what we're going to do is we'll use Spark to grow a new ligand. So this is bioisosteric substitution in an unbiased way. So within Torch or Forge, we choose a reference structure, we align test molecules to the reference structure, and then we choose a molecule or fragment that will be sent over to Spark for fragment growing. So when the alignment experiment finishes, we see that we have our reference structure on the left, and then we have our ligand, our 1PXO ligand on the right. And we're going to use this 1PXO ligand, which is a fragment, to grow a new ligand. And we'll see that our alignment score in this case is 0 0.603. So looking at these separated and overlaid, we do see that 1PXO is a fragment and it only overlays fairly well with this portion of the, of the 1OIT ligand. So here is our iterative design experiment file. So this is the file where we have the 1OIT ligand shown in green, and then we have our cyclin-dependent kinases which have been aligned to this 1OIT reference. And we'll take a look at that 1PXO ligand. So in order to run Torch and, and Spark in tandem, we'll need to bring both of these structures over. We're going to use Spark in the sense of having two reference structures. So to do that easily, we have both structures in our 3D viewing area. Copy 3D. So that copies both of these structures to our clipboard. Now when we go to Spark, We'll relaunch the wizard here. So it asks us to load in a starter and a reference. So I'm going to paste these from the clipboard. So within Spark, we have the notion of a starter molecule and a reference molecule. The starter molecule is the molecule that we're going to make changes to. The reference molecule is going to be used in the scoring. And in our case, we're going to build onto our starter molecule and project onto those field points that are expected in the reference structure. So to do this, we're going to select our 1PXO ligand as our starter, and we're going to put 20% of the weight on it, the scoring weight, and we'll put 80% on the reference. And for a fragment growing experiment, anecdotally, this seems to work pretty good based on the experiments that we've done in-house. So now we select the bit of the molecule that we want to replace, so we want to grow off this amine group. We can add in some, some restrictions on the types of atoms that we're willing to accept at this connection point, but I'm just going to let this go without any restrictions. Uh, we can use the protein structure as an excluded volume. I don't have that available, so we'll skip. Um, we have the notion of constraints. So for example, if you knew that one of these field points was absolutely critical for activity, you could select that field point and put a constraint on it so that it must show up in any alignment. And that's it if we click Finish now. So now when we click Finish, we select the Crescent Fragment databases that we want to use. And we're going to use the Kemble Common. And we'll use the Zinc, in, uh, Zinc databases, which are very common, common, and common. Additionally, we have these Crescent Reagent databases. So these are the Zinc databases, the Zinc commercial compounds that have been fragmented, the same as in these databases above, however they've been separated so that you can control the chemistry. So for example, if we wanted to make attachments that were based on that aiming group, we could take for example this database where we've clipped off the, the amines but we kept the, the nitrogen group. We'll click Next. So now we have our setup. So in our setup for a fragment growing experiment, 
The first thing we need to do is take a look at the size criteria and to turn the size criteria off. And in some cases, you may want to increase the heavy atom count or the molecular weight of the fragment or indeed the number of rotatable bonds. So as long as we have this constraint off, we're going to be able to grow our fragment. If we don't have this off, then we'll only find fragments that are similar size to the bit that we circled when we were choosing where we wanted to replace. And finding fragments that are about the size of an aiming group would really end up with a lot of boring results. In our scoring, we're going to score 50% fields, 50% shape, and we should be ready to go. So this experiment does take a little bit of time, so I'm going to show you one that I prepared earlier. So here are the results from the torch and spark tandem fragment growing experiment that I prepared earlier. If we look through the results, what we have is our 1PXO ligand has been maintained, and then we substituted a, a, a bioisoster, if you will, for the group that is expected in the 1OIT bioactive conformation ligand, which is shown here in green. The 1PXO is shown in black. So our first result looks interesting. Um, as we scroll down through, we see that we have some, some, some more or less interesting results from this fragment growing experiment. Some, a number of fused heterocycles, uh, as well as some substituted heterocycles, which could prove interesting synthetically and, and might be worth taking a look at in the laboratory. We can choose some of these as favorites. Let's just grab a couple of these as favorites. And we can save or export those favorites to a CSV file, or we could save them to an SD file, which could be shared throughout your organization. This concludes this web clip on growing fragments and using Torch and Spark in tandem for iterative design. If you would like more information, we encourage you to visit our website. If you would like to take part in a free 30-day trial of any of our software, please send an email to inquiries at crescent-group.com. Thank you and have a great day.